so a stalemate means no one wins because of um, the situation on the table. So here was the, the example that uh, Jason and I talked about. Imagine you're on the eight ball, your opponent is on the six ball, and the balls are clustered and they're on the short rail. Actually, if you look behind Jason. Uh, yeah, I was, I was gonna say, you could actually see it. You can actually table, see uh, them. As, as, so as yeah. we were talking about it. So right. it, it, might, it might put a little more perspective as to what we're saying, so. Yeah. So, um, the, so the situation is, let's say you're on the eight ball and it's your shot, what do you do? Most of the, most amateur players take a shot at the eight ball. They try to bank it. They try to do something crazy. They try to play some kind of defense. They, they're, do, they're doing something. Um, this came up, and I'm, I'm sorry I don't have the name or the letter in front of me. This came up because someone actually sent me a letter by email, not even in the comments. He sent it by email and said um, he lost a game, and he was asking me what the rule was. And, he, and I actually went to one of my students who is an APA 7, uh, and asked him, what's the rule? And he reminded me what it was. And I said, that's what I thought it was. So here's the rule. You're on the eight ball. Your balls are clustered up. You know that if you touch the eight, you're going to free up his six. So you, you hand him the cue ball and you say ball in hand. You just refuse to shoot. This guy, not knowing any better, took that ball in hand, hit his six ball with a legal shot, freeing up the eight ball. The other guy makes the, makes the eight ball and, and wins. The stalemate would have been the guy that was on the six hands the ball back to the first guy and says ball in hand. If neither of them is going to shoot, it's a stalemate. And my understanding is once it goes back and forth, it's a stalemate. That game is if, as if it never happened. Okay. Now, what would happen in a legitimate real world? tournament there would probably be a three foul rule which means the guy that's on the eight okay it's his shot if he doesn't shoot he takes gives the ball in hand to the other guy that's one foul if you get three fouls in a row you lose the match so so that forces him to shoot that forces him to shoot because the other ball guy could give it back to him he would give it back to him and the guy that first took the foul so, would so he, he, you know, um, we get he, to three he, first. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, right? He's, he's exactly. Gonna, he's so the first guy that didn't okay. shoot. So that's why you don't see this happening, especially in nine ball tournaments. Uh, if you watch professionals play, you don't realize there's a three foul rule because nobody uses Never it. Never gets to it, yeah. Yeah. But I actually won a game. I don't know that it resulted in me winning a match or not, but I actually won a game in a tournament because I deed the guy up three times in a row. He could not hit the other ball. I didn't have to run the table. Just played three, you know, three shots that he could not get. He could not kick or jump to get to the um, whatever ball we were on. So that's a pretty cool rule, I think, because it does does add an element of um, of skill to okay. the to the game. Uh, so anyway, that's what a that's what a stalemate is, and that would prevent it if you had the three foul rule. There, here's something that's common, but it is not a rule. That most APA matches are played on bar boxes. In the masters division, uh, they tend to play on on you know nine foot tables, but most APA games are played on seven foot tables. Um, how do you feel about that? Um, well, I'm used to playing on an eight foot table, so it doesn't really kill me to have to go play on a, on a seven foot bar box. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm, that's just my perspective. Um, I'm actually okay with it. It's definitely not more difficult than playing here at home. Right. Um, it's, I mean, the, the thing is some of the tables are, are really bad condition, really bad felt, depending on what bar or what location you go to. Yeah, you know, I've been to I've been to three different places. Two out of the three were very poorly conditioned tables. You know, I think we've discussed this before. With you know, sometimes bars are not going to make the uh, the investment. Um, right. you know, to uh, upkeep that table really well. Um, so I wouldn't say so much the size of the table is an issue. I would say more the condition of the table is is definitely more of an issue than right. the size of it. Um, yeah, we 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 all want to play on nine foot diamond tables, right? 
Um, well, no, but that's no, just, no. a lot that, of people. That, 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 a lot of people that, don't don't want to. Now, <laughs> well, all right. So I'm I'm speaking for myself, I guess. I, yeah, I've had a lot of guys that I I was the first person to take them to a pool hall, uh -huh. and they say the same thing every time. Oh, this table is so fast. Now this is what felt is supposed to run like. Oh, this table is so big. So now this big, is what a yeah, table. This yeah. is the size the table is supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't know. To, to, to me, a, 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 an eight foot table is is, is ideal. Um, yeah. Again, that's just me. Do some of the APA leagues have eight foot tables, or are they all bar boxes? I'm just curious because I haven't been to one that's not. My my, I I give this bar more shout outs. They need to sponsor me, by the way. But my team <laughs> played at a place called the Fox and the Hound, which was a huge sports bar um, in Pennsylvania, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. And at the time, I don't know today, I hear mixed reviews. At the time, they had five of the most beautiful eight-foot tables. And we were the only ones in our division that had eight-foot tables. Um, everybody else had bar boxes where they were playing because they were at the VFW or some dive bar or some restaurant or whatever. Um, so, yeah, we had we had eight-foot tables. And we had run at a place on league night uh, so at least one section, uh, sometimes two, sometimes three tables were all, all ours and we'd have a practice table. I mean, it was, it was just, it was wonderful. It was unbelievable how great the situation was. Beautiful waitresses, yeah. great food, nice place, big giant TVs. You, you know, you're playing on Monday night and you're watching Monday night football and you got, what is it called? The, the Fox and the Hound? The Fox <laughs> and the Hound. Um, I've talked about it in videos and I've, yeah, and, I've, I've, yeah. I've heard you mention it, I think once or twice before. So most places you're going to be playing on a seven foot table, you know, I've, and, one, I've and, and, and every place I've gone to only has one table. A um, lot of them only have one table. Yeah. It's just so, one table as well. So everybody's kind of waiting around. That's why, you know, sometimes the league night will last till 11 o'clock or 1130 or something, even though you start at 730. Right. Um, but um, it's okay. Yeah. And everything you don't want to pay for on your pool table, bars and restaurants, most of which, you know, people that don't know business don't know business. Um, and I'm not talking about during a pandemic. I'm talking about an ideal situations, bars and restaurants, if they break even, if they can pay the bills every month, they are very happy. And you throw in changing the felt on a, on a pool table keeping a pool table level, all of those things, you know, that's, that's a thousand bucks, um, you know, to get it leveled and to change the, the felt. So another one, which I don't think is a big deal for a lot of people. Uh, and again, they allow it in the masters, but uh, actually jumping is. Well, they, they, they allow jumping, but you can't use a jump cue. You can't right? use a jump cue. So, which is, I mean, I, I, I haven't come across that yet, but am I going to use, you know, my stick to, to, to jump over another ball? Is it worth doing it? Um, again, I, I haven't come across it yet. Well, but, let me put it this way. Um, I've seen some of my buddies, uh, even on YouTube, like um, uh, Jim from Bang Time. I know, uh, I, to the best of my recollection, has a pretty decent jump shot with his with his playing cue, mm -hmm. I got crazy jumps, crazy jumps, but I can't jump with a your regu your playing regular cue. cue. I just can't do it. And part of it might be psychological because I don't want to slam well, that, my that, tip that, off. That, 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 yeah, that, there's a reason why it's cut, you know, whatever, eight yeah. inches or, or something yeah. like that. Is, so, is um, you know. Yeah, but I, I, I do know some people do a decent job uh, jumping with a, um, with a with a regular cue the 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 irony is if they ban jumping in their regular matches i would get it i would understand it it would make sense banning it only with a jump cue is nuts because right. what you've done is you've taken and not let's let's because I'm going to recap why these rules exist, because every one of them, I can make an argument for why it exists. Um, banning jumping would make sense because you've got some amateur players, some very new to the game, who would try to shoot jump shots, probably execute a, a most likely execute a scoop shot, which is not going to count anyway, um, wrecking 
the possibly table. some tables. But now by banning the jump cue, you've put the thing that is more likely to cause a miscue on a jump shot of some type in their hand, which is a full right. size cue with God knows what kind of tip. So, um, so that's, that's kind of, that's kind of weird to me that that rule exists. I like the idea. If you say no jumps, that's fine. Right. And in the masters, they let you jump with whatever you want. Um, but yeah, that's, okay. that's pretty common. Uh, any other rule that just jumps out to you and no, um, I, 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 I think we've done a good job pretty much discussing okay. the rules that most APA players are going to question, you know, whether it's the, uh, the break rule or the um, call your shot rule. I think those are probably the two biggies and the other ones that we discuss are probably things that don't come up as often like stalemate. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to hear your recap as to why some of those rules are, are in place because I really can't think of them without you explaining. So let's, let, <laughs> let, 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 let's see what you got. Okay. So I'm going to tell you this from a player standpoint, from a professional standpoint, a business standpoint, when I say business, I'm talking about the business of the APA. Um, some of these rules, the call your shot rule. Don't forget what the APA is. It is an amateur pool league, which was designed to bring people together so that people of all levels could compete. And when you put a person in a game and you tell them you don't have to call your shots. Number one, they're more likely to be able to compete. Even though we discussed the fact that it doesn't come up that often, right. but, there, but this is a guy making up rules, you know, starting his, his league. They're more likely to compete and they're more likely to um, have a chance of, of winning. Okay. So a lot of the APA rules are, neutralizer rules. In fact, bar boxes are called neutralizer tables because a seven and a three are this far apart. In the APA, in, in, in with, with professional rules, they're this far apart. In the APA, they're this far apart because the three is going to have times when they make a shot that they didn't call. And they're on the neutralizer tables. When you reduce the size of the table from nine feet to eight feet to eight feet to seven feet, you run out of long shots. Who's going to make more long shots? Right. The seven is going to make more long shots. Right. Um, so that's another reason, you know. Now, bar boxes are very easy to come by for a restaurant or a bar. Uh, you have room for a bar box when you don't have room for an eight-foot table. Mm -hmm. You well, can that makes put, sense. You can put three bar boxes in the same space that you have, you know, one or two eight foot tables and they don't make a lot of coin up eight foot tables, right? Right. even the fox and the hound, they weren't coin up tables you paid by time. Um, so there's going to be bar boxes. If there were no bar boxes, there'd be no APA. There would, be, there would not be enough places to play because right. these places, think about where you play and there's still seven foot tables. Imagine an eight foot table in there doesn't even fit most of the time okay yeah. so um and that space is better used for people that are sitting down and actually paying for food um at you know thirty dollars a clip rather than uh pool at you know one dollar every uh, 20 okay. minutes or so <laughs> a lot of these rules exist is to make it casual and fun and so that the lower ranked players have a legitimate shot of winning and and they do you know threes are beating sevens as we speak because they only have to win two games and That's they maybe correct. made a lucky shot or whatever. And, and right. if they got run all over every week, they may never show up again. So a lot of these rules are the reason, yeah. you know, I, there, uh, is a, I, there is a league. I, on, on Monday, I saw a three beat a seven and he, he, he beat them like in three games. I mean, he got yeah. a, a nice runoff on one game. The second game, the uh, seven hit the eight ball and by mistake on a, on a weird carom and boom, he's done. He's, He's right. unlocking his stick and putting it back in his bag. That was it. So, yeah, um, which brings up, um, I don't want to go all the way back, but that brings up some other, some other rules. Um, like 
you know, I don't know if guys realize this. Don't do it. If you break down your cue, you conceded the game. So a lot of people don't know that rule. Okay. You're, no, it, it was it was after the game was over. No, I understand, but you over. you brought it up. I wanted to make sure people understand. The other guy shooting is the last game. He's on the last three balls. You break down oh, your gosh. cue. He can stop right there and say thank you. Oh, really? Have a good night. That's, I just want. Yeah, because that's a sharking move, breaking down your cue while the guy is shooting. Yeah, it's a, it's a mind game. Uh, yeah, you know, to, to yeah. So opponent, opponent. yeah, people yeah. don't realize that you conceded the game as soon as you broke down your cue, um, which I think also exists in a lot of professional events. You won't you won't see them do it, but but it also exists in um, in some professional events. Uh, so yeah, anything like that, you want to, you want to <laughs> stay away from. Not only that, it's it doesn't work. You know, people see you break down their your cue. It's not like they're distracted and all of a sudden they can't make the last two balls. Right. So, <laughs> well, it's 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 poor ethics, I think. So yeah, you think but, you're yeah. you're doing something. Uh, you know, I I want guys hit me in the comments and or send me an email and tell me some of your APA stories that relate to some kind of vague gamesmanship or yeah because i've right. heard some things like um the three he's about to win he's on a ball and he's not sure if it goes and somebody from his team stands up looks at the table goes back to the coach and says out loud yeah it goes um <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> Really? Did you just yeah. did you just send that message I, I, over I, there? Yeah, I can see that happening. Yeah, that and, happening. and the funny thing is about human beings, they're not bright. And they think that they did something slick. And in the meantime, yeah. I'm like, no. how, 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 how many timeouts are you allotted? I'm not even sure of that. I don't, depends on sure your rank. Now. Yeah, it depends on your rank. Oh, really? Um, yeah, okay. five, I think, is one timeout. Everybody else might get two. I know the threes they get two timeouts okay. and frankly, people don't use them enough, but most likely the result of a timeout is the coach telling them to play safe. <laughs> <laughs> most of the defensive shots, I think, uh, are That's the result good. of a coach saying, no, you want to just tap this and just put this over yeah. there. Uh, Leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> but, <laughs> But um, and a lot of the coaches were cool. They would they would tell you, yeah, we got to play defense on you here. This is not going to yeah. go well. Um, but yeah, yeah, and that's one of the reasons. One day we'll do a, a video about safeties. Um, but that's one of the reasons safeties are played a lot in the APA. They should be played a lot more than they they are just by right. everybody. But um, most guys that are playing safety in the APA. Uh, are either high ranked players or they are being coached by high ranked players who tell them, um, yeah, you need to play right. safety here because a lot of people, they think they can make that bank shot because they saw it on TV or on YouTube. But, <laughs> um, they probably should not shoot it. And maybe they can make right. it, maybe they couldn't, but they probably should not take it. All right. So anyway, that's, that's a lot of the rules. Uh, guys, hit us in the comments. Tell us what rules you like, don't like, would change. Uh, they don't have to be rules. They could be like the bar box situation. Um, uh, I can just tell you there would be no APA if there were no bar boxes. You're going to play on bar boxes or you're not going to have a league. Um, right. You can always sense. talk to the owners of the bars about the condition of the table and they will brush you off and um, go about their business because <laughs> they, you know, be thankful that you have a place that will let you play. You know, don't expect them to take care of the tables because you don't like them. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Do hit us in the comments. Let us know what rules, even if we if rules we mentioned or we didn't mention or whatever. If I got any rules wrong, let that me know that not. as well, because I'm a little removed from it. And Jason didn't even know about the any pocket rule. So, you know, uh, I'm not there are times down, yeah. Yeah. when we might not know. I need to get a sponsorship from Gatorade and Monster Drinks. <laughs> we tend to leave a proper. <laughs> there you go.
they're never going to sponsor me. I can't hold the label. I'll just put it on my shirt and I won't have to say anything. It's a nice shirt, by the way. I had this custom made. Yeah. You can't buy yeah. this. Yeah, it's a very nice shirt. I like the uh, Predator FXB shirt. I never asked you, what, what's FX for? People ask me in the, in the comments about once every two months. When I first started 10 years ago, I'm sorry, this is a long drawn up uh, explanation. But when I first started 10 years ago, I had a vision that what would separate my channel would be effects like slow motion, okay. you know, graphics, shit like that. Um, and then after I had some videos where I had some really close up shots, some slow motion shots, and, and I still go back to it every now and then, but um, I said, you know what, I'm gonna make it more about content. And then I made 20 videos and then walked away from it for 10 years. So, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool name. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I was just curious what it meant. Yeah. If, um, I, if I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't call it FX and I wouldn't call it billiards. But yeah, um, but yeah that's what it means. Like effects. Okay. All right. Am I centered fine? You are centered fine. Actually, um, well, I'm not going to get into what the rule of thirds are, but we really should not be centered. We should be, um, it doesn't matter. Right. We're, we're doing fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>